the good news, though, is for folks that your cash is actually working something. So for investors out there, you need to be pushing, and cash management should be an everyday exercise for people looking to see where they're earning nothing on their money. Push your banks around. Get yourself into three- and six-month T-bills, even if you're just doing cash management. But if you get back to where the Fed is, where the Fed was yesterday, it wasn't, you know, it's not how fast, it's how far. And so if you look at what happened to interest rates over the last couple of days, that two-year went from 443 to 471 in, in essentially a, one session. Uh, but you look at what happened to the Fed fund futures curve, and you don't have to be, again, you can find this information, but what really is happening is the peak of Fed fund futures went from April out to July. It was 475 a week ago. It's now at to 515. So you're getting some sense of where we are. Uh, I, I think you get back to a couple of things. The Fed, their 2% inflation target ain't happening anytime soon. And there's three or four reasons why we talk about the death of globalization. We talk about the stickiness of the housing market. We talk about health care costs, which continue to go higher. And I think these are things that you have to think about. But it comes back to the market, which Guy said, so I won't touch the valuation side. I'll say, what sectors do you want to own in this environment? And, and banks, by the way, have the best exposure to real rates, and they've been outperforming since their earnings. And then I would go back to energy, because in an inflationary environment, the energy sector is outperforming, and it will continue to outperform. Yeah, Carter. I mean, the thing about banks, of course, is that the if you really are going to go into a slowdown, we know the charge-offs start, right? The loan loss provisions, and they haven't Credit. really taken measures for that. So it is a cyclical glare. But one thing that is important about the market, and Guy, you mentioned this, and it's the valuation issue. Valuation is a very tough thing. Do you get a trough multiple on trough earnings. That's, that's the, the rarity, right? So are we really going to get a 14 multiple on a 20% on a decline in earnings? Because then you're going into the high 2900s. I suspect it is closer to a 3100. But the main thing is, what is the premise to be really bullish here? It just doesn't have, it doesn't carry, doesn't carry water. Well, high, not only higher, but longer. I mean, yes. this higher rate will be with us for longer. So how do you extract, how do you project that onto a multiple Well, the market, the market always is, is always six to eight months ahead anyway. So you're going to see the drop in, in the market. You're going to see the buying opportunity before we're actually out of the woods of a recession anyway. Mm -hmm. But when you, when you let off the show, 3.5% 30-year in February, 7% now, over 7%. Yeah. Why hasn't housing adjusted more? Lack of supply. People aren't moving. I mean, you know, there's... Or tip, of the, liquid or tip of the iceberg they haven't still. Replaced yet. Right. And, and what, what is the Fed looking to do? Crush demand. We haven't got to crush demand yet. Because housing hasn't responded in an adequate fashion yet. Well, so there's more to come. Well, that's the bad news. And that's right. so you're more to come. That's a, And I saw you, by the way. Yes. I saw you on the Today Show today, which is amazing. You sh I mean, <laughs> you're, you're crushed it. And you mentioned exactly that. What's changed is it's going to be longer duration. I don't think the market was expecting that, which is why we saw the precipitous decline that we did yesterday and probably will continue to see. With that said, Steve is exactly right. They're trying to crush demand which makes tomorrow's jobs number extraordinarily important because if you get a good job number in terms of things haven't gotten deteriorated on the jobs front, that really makes a difficult job for them that much more and, difficult. And let's give Dan credit. Dan said that Dan Powell, Nathan. Dan Nathan, Powell Dan, Dan got a first look at that report. Bef and and, and I, not that he – maybe it was in the interview process that he can parse his words. Obviously, the written process – of the Fed meeting was already done long before that. But it's probably going to be a pretty good number tomorrow. Well, we also get, we get two jobs reports before the next Fed meeting. So it sort of, that sort of complicates things. If you think that we're going to get any answers based on tomorrow's report, we got that. We got We've got CPI another one. we got a CPI up. report. I mean, there's a lot of, of data still to come. In a way, the worst thing that could have happened is that we bounced so much. Think about it. The October 13th mm -hmm. low, uh, we went up almost 12, 13 percent. If we'd gone down 12, 13 percent, we could be almost done with this. We'd be at close to 3,000. And then mm -hmm. the Fed, and they are watching stock prices. We know stock prices are in the leading indicator index. They would be much more concerned. The bounce allows them to say, hey, we can be a little tougher.